why does it feel like her voice sounds like everything that's right in the world? The Willoughbys. So The Willoughbys is a new Netflix animated movie. It's about four siblings that are neglected by their parents. They venture off into the world to try to find that affection and love when they realize that it's been closer than they thought all along. This movie was a little different than I expected. I don't really watch full trailers, so the first couple of seconds that I did watch, I was expecting something more of like a Dr. Seuss movie, something that rhymed a lot, kind of like a Horton Hears a Who, you know? But once I started watching it, I was like, huh, this ain't that at all. It opens up with a cat played by Ricky Gervais. He's breaking down the different types of families in the neighborhood leading up to the Willoughbys. He portrays them as this unconventional family and foreshadows things to come. And yeah, cat don't lie. It didn't take long before I realized this movie is one octave away from being sad and gloomy. They write that line pretty well, but manage to stay on the happy side of things for the most part. The parents are definitely neglectful, and when they're not role-playing or trying to repopulate, they're off knitting and hating their kids. Ah, uh, yes, the children. When it comes to these kids, it's hard to tell what would be worse, living in foster care or having parents that clearly don't love you. Even though they live with them, they're essentially glorified orphans, which is crazy. Will Forte does a good job playing the bigger brother. You can tell he's torn between trying to please his parents still while also trying to protect his siblings and provide for them. He definitely hits the mark when it comes to the hierarchy between siblings, and I thought he was pretty relatable. Eventually something happens to where the kids have to leave the house, and the creators really take advantage of that when it comes to the different color palettes, so I think you'll like the visuals as well. It's not really your classic cartoon type graphics, I'd say it's a mix between a Tim Burton movie and Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. The colors really pop, especially when it's against darker grays and blacks. And they also add a lot of detail when it comes to simple things like a ball of yarn or the rainbow. Now, including the brother, this movie has a lot of impressive actresses and actors attached to it. You have Terry Crews, who plays Commander Melanoff. He's essentially the Willy Wonka style owner of a candy factory. Character-wise, he was one of my top three favorites. His character is this larger-than-life person who towers over everyone, and when he talks, it's like listening to a black Ned Flanders. When it came to the kids, I thought he did a really good job showing love to them, and when he was on screen, it was really enjoyable and entertaining to see him move about. Aside from him, you have Maya Rudolph in here as the nanny. She was my second favorite character. I really love most of her work and even enjoyed her playing Kamala Harris on SNL. In this movie, her character sort of just pops up out of nowhere, like a queen version of a Mary Poppins. Similar to Terry Crews' character, she stands out as that character that brings love to the kids. She was my second favorite character because you get a little more background from her compared to the rest of the characters. It really shows just how much she had in common with the kids, and she's more of a parental figure, even though she's just their nanny. And then you have Elisa Cara's character. She plays the older sister, and why does it feel like her voice sounds like everything that's right in the world? I enjoyed her as a sister, but I really loved her singing more. Somebody also told me she played on Moana. I don't know if that's true. The way she sounds definitely went with her character visually, and everything worked when she was on screen. It's definitely a cheat code when it comes to pulling on your heartstrings. I do hope she does more movies like this. I can see her in more sing-alongs and big-budget Disney movies. All in all, I thought this was a good movie. It's a little more mature than expected, so it's not going to be as entertaining for young kids like a Despicable Me would be. But it is a family movie, so if you have kids that are maybe in the second grade and up, I think they'll like it. From the singing to the tunes that are being played when they're on their adventure, I do hope they put out a soundtrack to this movie. Netflix did a good job with this animated film, and the ending was done right as well. If you like movies like James and the Giant Peach, or a series of unfortunate events, then I think you'll like this one. I'd say The Willoughbys is an exciting film that keeps you entertained. Have you seen The Willoughbys? Did your kids like it? Let me know in the comments below. As always, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and attack the comments section. Peace.